So welcome back friends to what is coming up on, well, almost one of our final episodes of the Common Man's Toolkit. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, this series has been uh, me putting together a super, super cheap traditional woodworking toolkit that pretty much anyone could afford if they saved up for a month or two. We're looking for high quality, high value items. And today I'm gonna to share with you one of the final tools we're gonna to add in the kit and what was probably the most difficult to source. Now, a lot of the tools that uh, we're using, almost all the tools that we're using are brand new. The only thing that I couldn't find was a reasonably priced bits, drill bits, brace bits, the old traditional ones. There's one company that still makes them, Irwin, but they're $200 for their set. Too much money. So I have went out and found the used ones and I recommend you do that. Everything else, which I'll, we'll just do a real quick recap here in a minute, is brand new. You can be purchased on Amazon. So today, the difficult one, the hard one to find, was I did finally find a brace, a drill brace, that's decent quality for a de decent price. These are rare, they're hard to come by because there's just not very many manufacturers making them anymore. What has take, taken its place? The modern cordless drill. So a lot of people think that there's just not much, there's no relevance, uh, there's just not much use for these anymore. I would disagree, but I did find one. Now this is a good one. So the price for this one came in, I think it was right around $36. I haven't used it yet. We're gonna test it today to find out if indeed it will make it into the kit, but it is the Faithful Tools, Faithful Quality Tools, 10 inch carpenters, traditional carpenters brace made, made in England, made in England. And if you look at it, you know, it's not too shabby. It's a uh, ratcheting. You know, so we like that ratchet, ratcheting, and it will work with both regular screw heads and the tapered shanks. It's designed to work with both, so that'll be that'll be fine. Um, looks pretty good so far. Plastic handles instead of the traditional wood, but you know, it is very similar to my high quality ratcheting brace. You can see, of course, minus the rosewood handles, but. Beggars can't be choosers, that's what we got. So let's take a close look at, actually let's do a recap of all the tools so we can see what we've got up to date and then we'll uh, put this to the test and see if it's worthy for the Common Man's Toolkit. Here we go, let's jump right in. We'll go from left to right. Hopefully this won't confuse any of our Hebrew scholars. Maybe next time we can go right to left. So the chisels that we ended up with are the three chisel set, the Irwins, a one inch, a half, quarter inch, and a half inch. I've been very impressed with the quality of these. I've been using them quite a bit. Hope you don't mind. Uh, and I prefer them over my Stanley Sweethearts. And of course, with the that came with the nice marples. I got everything all dirty here. The marples, maple, uh, mallet. Very, really like that. Kind of hard to give this up. We went with the Stanley SB4 chisel, or chisel. Bench plane, bench plane, the best $20 bench plane I think money can buy. Of course, your official Wrangler Star pencil. These things, you know. People ask if they can buy them. No, you can't buy them. The only way you can get them is if you meet us. We actually ran out in Boston. We had to give the Ticonderoga pencils. So we'll have, next time you see us, we'll hopefully have some. We just ordered another thousand. Uh, our excellent Norton India Benchstone. Man, that is, that's another one I'm gonna not wanna give up there. That is a nice, nice, nice little Benchstone. Moving on to the right, we have the Stanley Fat Max Coping Saw. Six dollars, get out, I can't even believe. Six dollars, I've used this saw. We cut all of our dovetails on our box. That's a nice little saw. The all metal, hard to find, all metal 12 foot Stanley Power Lock tape. Just love these little tapes. Don't, when you buy these, look for the metal ones. Don't get the plastic case. And of course the Stanley 10-0-049 marking knife, as well as the very excellent and better than the one that I have, Irwin Combination Square. I've I'm telling you, most of these tools I've been using instead of my own, I like them so well. And of course the Woodsman's Crayons, there'll be two of those that I made uh, yesterday. We'll be including those in the kit. A set of highly coveted, very sought after traditional Irwin shank bits. This is from 5 16 to 15 16 a near full set, just missing two. That's up to you to find them. And the excellent, had to go with two, the excellent Japanese pole saws. Man, the back's off for cutting, doing our fine work, and the traditional good size universal crosscut rip saw. These are wonderful saws. And to finish out, the excellent and most, these are really something, aren't they? Mr. McRae's clamps. Two of Mr. McRae's clamps. Now, if you don't know, if you didn't come to see us on Boston at our meet and greet, 
Who do you think blessed us with his attendance? Mr. Mer McRae himself. He showed up and I got to shake his hand and meet him. And that was really, really cool. His sister brought him down. And uh, sorry we missed you, John. Mr. McRae's brother, but uh, we had a good time meeting him. So that was really cool. And he brought some clamps for some of the guys there. And that, that was kind of neat. So let's uh, let's take a close up look at, the, at our new brace. So here's an up close and personal view of the, what do we have here? The 10 inch traditional carpenters brace. Faithful quality tools, five year guarantee. And as we see there, made in the United Kingdom, in Dartford, Dartford, Dartford. I don't know what that is. Uh, apparently, they have a whole line of tools. It would be interesting to see their catalog. A 12 inch, 12 point reversible ratchet, 10 inch sweeping handle, versatile jaws for use with parallel taper and combination shanks. Ideal use for auger flatbed. So you can use anything in this. Makes it pretty versatile. So, just my fir first general impressions. You know, for this is a in the 35, 36 dollar range. Um, it looks looks pretty good. The machining looks decent. Let's take the let's break the chuck down and take a look at that before we drill some holes with it. But the thread looks nice it, to me. It appears to be a pretty quality, good quality tool. That's interesting. There we go. I can see the inner workings. Look at that. That's interesting, isn't it? What do you think of the mind that came up with that? So we see if we let's grab one of our bits right here. That's a little bit, so these are nice. So I've got my old granddad's um, version of this and the chuck and the teeth are loose and they don't, and they come out. So we can see there how that holds in there. So you can go, go beyond and, and you could capture. It's flat there, but you can, if you go beyond, you can capture the tapered bit. Interesting, so it just goes around the shank there, but that looks spring steel on that. Looks like it's pretty well put together. Don't see any issues. Chrome plated, nice, good threads. How's the, uh, how does it grab a bit? How does it grab? So if we drop our 13, 13 16 in there, helps to go the right way. Looks pretty good. Lock up pretty solid. Don't see don't see any problem there. We'll find out here soon, then, won't we? All right. So how about the ra ratcheting mechanism? We've got uh, we've got the gear in there. Looks like it's cadmium plated. And here are the pawls. The pawls are what what give us our ratcheting action. So how does that work there? I didn't. We're learning here together. I didn't really take a moment to see. So, so it looks like it's at this configuration, it's locked up. So if you don't want it to ratchet, it's a little play back and forth. That's pretty typical with a ratcheting style. There we go. Nice, pleasing click. You can see there on the spring, pretty positive. So if we want to go the other way, we flip this down, this one up. And we can go this way. So if we want to, so I see, so you lock, so, to, so you lock them, put them both in the down configuration to lock, flip one up if you want to ratchet. It's pretty simple. Handles, plastic, um, oh, maybe a little bit of a gripe here. I don't mind the plastic. I don't expect to, ha to have hand rubbed rosewood on a $36 tool, but it's a little bit catchy, but I think that that will probably wear in time. Use it a little bit and it should, it should uh, sort itself out. And then, of course, their top cap, a little bit of play in there, not super precise, but it is ball bearings. You can see them. I can see them in there. I can see the race. Uh, will those ball bearings fall out of there? Hmm. They seem to be captured. I'd like to have seen that a little bit tighter, but maybe I'm worried. Maybe it's a, I'm worried about nothing. I could just, but, but it is ball bearings. So maybe, can you see those little guys in there? So they can be they can be oiled. Speaking of which, you know one of my favorite one of the pleasures of life is oiling bearings, isn't it? I don't know what it is about it so satisfying. Well, let's put a little oil on there before we use it. There, that'll be nice. But it does have a guarantee, so if there's any problem, I guess I guess you'll find out. All right, so let's chuck up a bit and see how it works on a piece of wood. So if any of you would like to earn a little extra credit, can you tally up what we have invested in the Common Man's Toolkit per day, 
as, as of today, presently, as I don't really know, I've kind of lost track. I'm going to have to go back through there. If you could go through there and do that for me, put it in the comments, I would appreciate that. I th I'm thinking we're probably around the, maybe just coming over around $200 mark for the whole set, which I think is, is really great. Okay, so let's choose, let's choose a, a mid-size bit. How about we'll go with a half inch? Half inch bit, is that asking too much? We'll check up our half inch bit and we'll see how it drills with those freshly oiled bearings. We know that's gonna be good. So you might be asking yourself, how do I enter to win this? Well, you just, you gotta comment on one of the videos. So if you haven't commented or you're not sure, comment on this one and you'll be in with everyone else. You don't have to be a subscriber, you just have to, just have to comment. Okay, so here we go. So initial impressions, the handle right here, this feels good, it's smooth. There is some play in the, I can hear the bearings ticking a little bit in the top. Let's test, test the ratcheting function here. Well, that's not going to work very well. We'll go the other way. So let's try, let's try another hole. So one thing I noticed is that uh, maybe you saw it in the video that the uh, the bit the shank was slipping in the truck a little bit, um, and I, what I so I pulled it back out and I. I got it tighter. I just don't think I had it tight enough. Let's see here. We'll do another hole. It feels good. It's not up to snuff of my beautiful rosewood handle one. As far as just smoothness, function wise, no difference. No difference that I can tell. I like the stroke. Um, the ratcheting seems to work. I think chance would favor me and I'd get one 50% of the time get it right. Uh, the ratcheting device seems to work good. It's really important to have uh, your, your uh, brace that ratchets because what happens if you work in tight areas? So yeah, if, if you have all the room in the world, it doesn't make any difference. But let's say you're a, you're a boat builder, right? And we've had this conversation before, right? And you're working up against the gunnel or something like that, right? And of course, you, you can't get that full stroke. Chunk, you know, you're hitting, you're hitting things. So there you go, right there. So you can work in a real tight, confined area and you're not limited uh, in any way. So that's why it's so important to have these. Um, if I was gonna only have one, well, of course I would want one that was ratcheting and that's why it was, that's why I chose this one. Not that I had a lot of choices, but, uh, but that, was, uh, that was what was on my mind. So there is, a free, there is a free wheel mode too. And that way we can kind of test and see what the tolerances are, are there on the body. Do you see that there? A little bit of wiggling. How does that stack up against our, our good one? How does that work? So if we, here's the, you know, it's, it's about, about the same. So, so hard to complain about that, right? And I know that's a good one. A little bit, little bit more, but totally acceptable. And well, the price is right. All right, so let's, uh, let me give you my conclusion here, see if it's gonna make it into the common man's kit. Closing thoughts on the, the faithful brace. Well, is it gonna make it into the common man's toolkit? It is. It seems to be, seems to be a pretty good tool. It's the, the only thing that, that I'm not super comfortable with is I'd like to see you know, I mean, it would take a lot of use, years and years and years, but I, I wonder, I'd like to see that cap held on there a little bit tighter, but I've looked at it pretty closely and I don't see where it could really fail without just tons and tons of use. Um, the fit and finish on it, the, the handles, the size, the dimensions, just the way it works ergonomically with the body are all very good. Um, I can't tell much difference between this and mine. Um, I think that the Paul system here for the ratcheting chuck is very robust, um, tension to detail like cadmium plating. It looks like a hardened tool steel on the pawls. They're not just using pop metal. Um, it's certainly 
it looks decent. Robust, put together reasonably well, press fit on a few things, the knurling is good, the coatings look good. I, I really like the chuck system, that seems to be um, really good, the way they come, they come together. Pretty, pretty good, you can see right there, or maybe you can, I don't know, it's probably not gonna focus. Um, but they come together, what I'm talking about is you know how, you know, you look at your pliers, your Leatherman tools, how Leathermans are really good at this, how the, the jaws come together perfectly. You know, you don't see that with some of the other ones. Um, so this is very good, the way they all come together, pretty, pretty standard, um, but it looks great. So I would say yes, it's going to make it into the Common Man's Toolkit now, you've got a way to drill holes. You know, and that's really, really important. So this was a much needed thing. It was kind of an expensive addition to the kit at $36, uh, but I think it's well worth it. It just is a must have. That's one of the things you just cannot duplicate um, without specialized tools is drilling a round hole. Not a very good one. It just is a, you know, for pinning and traditional, it's, it's a must have. It was just not an option not to have one. I thought about getting a, a used one and refurbishing it. And I know there's always in the comments, people are gonna say, I could have got a better one for half of that at, at an antique store. I understand that, and that's true. Um, however, just because you happen to find one or you have access to one doesn't mean everyone else does. What I'm trying to do here is to make a kit available to anyone that, can or, that you can order these things. You don't have to go and look for things. Maybe you live in an area where you don't have any antique stores. You know, Maybe you're in the, in the military and you're putting this together to be waiting for you when you get home, You know that type of thing. So that's why I'm doing this. So um, that's it. So uh, one last thing. Um, I guess the next part, what I'd like you to put in the comments is, is I think that this is pretty much rounding the kit up. I mean, we can go and go crazy with this stuff, but have I covered the bases with the chisels, with the sharpening stone, with the bench plane, with the bit and brace, with the tape measure, the coping saw, the combination square, the two saws, the clamps, uh, the marking tool, and the Wrangler Star official pencil, and the mallet? Have I covered, have, do we have what we need for a basic kit or am I completely missing something? If, if you think there's something that I'm missing that needs to be in the kit. Now this is traditional woodworking. This is woodworking with no power tools um, and not building a house. You know, we're not putting the other carpenters kit. We're putting together a, an entry level kit for a beginner. Um, and no, I'm not including screwdrivers and that sort of things that I think that's something that everyone probably already has. They don't, you don't need my input on, on a screwdriver. But if there's something I missed, please put it in the comments or just your suggestions or recommendations. There also has been uh, quite a few folks that have things that wanted to contribute to the kit. Now, if you want to do that, that's fine with me, but you're gonna to have to get them here pretty quickly. Um, so contact me at Cody, my email, email is Cody at wranglerstar.com. Uh, if you have something that is, that is, is, that would fit into this. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe a spoke shape or a block plane. I'm not requesting, and I'm just saying, if you want to contribute uh, and you'd like to participate in this and, and put some, get something else in the kit that I may have not put in, um, you have that option. So contact me and we can, we can get that arranged. All right. So next we'll uh, get jumped, get, jump on, we'll put the bottom on the box, we'll get the handle situation all sorted out and start putting everything in there and get ready to ship this thing out. So I'm sorry it's taken so long, it's the trip to Boston and, um, and I'm only working on this when it's raining. That's why I'm in here today because it was, I was working outside and the rain chased me back in the shop. So it's kind of a fill in, but I think we'll, we'll get it wrapped up pretty soon. So don't forget to click the thumbs up if you'd enjoy this, if you have enjoyed this series and what else was there? I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.